Hi, welcome to Tinon Topor. Today, you will complete our site safety induction video. Whether you are a new employee, contractor, or a current team member refreshing your knowledge of the site safety standards, this video will give you an understanding of the how we can work together to ensure the safety of all on site. During the induction video, there will be questions to answer correctly in order to progress. Please follow the prompts. At the end of the video, you will have a chance to cover off any questions you may have with the Health and Safety Coordinator. Thanks, and we look forward to seeing you on site. Tenen Topor has been proudly operating from its Topor location for over 50 years. The business is privately owned and employs over 270 people. The Topor site is focused on producing high-quality, defect-free Radiata Clearwood products. To achieve this, we only process high-value prune butt logs. These logs come from trees that have had their branches removed or pruned at an early age, which then encourages the growth of clearwood. On site, there are several steps in extracting the maximum value from these logs. The sawmill, which is a grade cutting operation, uses a combination of experienced team members and state-of-the-art technology to extract the maximum volume of clearwood from every log processed. After processing in the sawmill, the majority of the timber is kiln dried in one of nine on-site kilns and then defilleted and graded at the surfacer. From here, the lumber is either packaged ready for sale or further processed on site into finished products such as clear pine boards, decking, siding or mouldings. To produce these finished products, the timber is defected, dressed, graded, packaged and loaded into 40-foot containers. Our customers Tenen Topor exports approximately 70% of its total production with key markets in the USA, Europe, China and Australia. The USA has been the backbone of our clearwood business. Today, we produce high-grade lumber which is used by manufacturers to make mouldings, window and door components, clear pine boards sold to a range of national home centres, pro dealer yards and distributors across the USA. Lifespan Solid Select, a branded treated and primed outdoor range of siding, cladding and mouldings. Europe is an exciting market that consumes large volumes of clear radiata used primarily in the wood modification market. Whilst there are a number of different wood modification processes, they all enhance the appearance and or durability of the radiata feedstock. China has long valued the semi-clear grades produced from Topor, which are used in the making of furniture, infancy and finger joint products. Core wood is sold on the domestic market and is used to produce pallet, packaging and some finger joint products. No matter where in the world our product is sold, the team at Ten and Topor have built a reputation for quality, service and reliability that we are all extremely proud of. Benefits of being part of the Ten and Topor team Life at Ten and Topor is more than just a job. Not only will you have the opportunity to develop, grow and meet new people, but you can also take advantage of our annual family day, staff discount card, for a small cost gain, access to an on-site, well-equipped gym and part-time personal trainer, education and welfare funds. Applications to the education fund can be made by employees, their partners and dependents and cover a range of educational opportunities. The Welfare Fund is available to employees only and provides assistance in times of unexpected medical misfortune. Further details on both funds are available from your supervisor or the HR team. Tenen Topor Responsibilities We all have responsibilities under the Health and Safety at Work Act 2015 and its associated regulations. It is important we understand what those responsibilities are. As the PCBU or principal, Tenen Topor must ensure your work here is done safely, 
the equipment you use is safe, and the environment you work in does not adversely affect your health. Tenant Topor also operates its business so that it meets or exceeds statutory health, safety and environmental requirements. Safe work instruments, relevant standards, approved codes of practice and good practice guides. Employee Responsibilities To help maintain a safe and healthy workplace, you also have an important part to play. To keep yourself and others safe from harm when undertaking work, you must take reasonable care for your own health and safety. Take reasonable care that your acts or omissions do not adversely affect the health and safety of other persons. Comply with any reasonable instruction that is given by Ten and Topor. Comply with any reasonable policy or procedure relating to health and safety. Report any accidents, incidents and near misses immediately to your supervisor. Identify any conditions or practices that may cause harm to people or property and take appropriate action to eliminate that risk. If it is not practicable to eliminate the risk, then it must be minimised. Report all hazards immediately to your supervisor. If you believe the work is unsafe, then stop and tell your supervisor. Tenan Topor is committed to maintaining a safe and healthy workplace. Our risk management process is 1. Identify what could harm the health or endanger the safety of yourself or others. 2. An assessment will identify who might be exposed to the risk, what the potential consequences might be, and how likely the consequences are. 3. We will try to eliminate the risk. But if it can't be eliminated, then it must be effectively reduced. 4. Lastly, the control measures will be monitored to ensure they remain effective. Please advise your supervisor immediately if the control measure is no longer effective and or damaged in any way. Critical Risks These are the four key critical risks you may be exposed to on site. 1. Moving Machinery 2. Mobile Plant 3. Noise 4. Manual Handling Some important safety control measures relating to these critical risks are covered in this induction. Others will be explained and shown to you by your supervisors, trainers and job leaders. Standard Operating Procedures, or SOPs, are documents that also contain important information that will keep you safe around these critical hazards as well as others that you may interact with. Moving Machinery We are a timber processing operation that uses machinery to convert logs into high-value products. This machinery may contain multiple hazards. Guarding involves separating the hazard or hazardous work practice from those who may be harmed from it. The following are some key guidelines when it comes to machine guarding. Ensure machine guards are always in place and working properly when operating machinery or equipment. Do not reach into, around or under machine guards. Do not modify or remove machine guards unless authorised to such as maintenance staff may be required to do during repair work. If you find a guard is damaged or missing, report it to your supervisor immediately and advise maintenance if directed to. Machine isolation and lockout. Isolation and lockout is used to safeguard employees and contractors when working on machinery. Isolation is the process of disengaging all energy sources from a machine so that the machine becomes totally dormant in all its workings. All energy sources must be isolated to establish a zero energy state, so that the machinery, plant and equipment contains no residual energy and is fully inoperative. Examples of sources of energy are electrical, pneumatic, hydraulic, mechanical and stored energy. 
Procedure application. Isolation and lockout must be strictly adhered to by all personnel when any maintenance, cleaning, clearing of blockages, cross-ups and jam-ups, set-ups and adjustments are to be made to any machinery, plant and equipment. Failure to do so is considered serious misconduct by the company. Personal padlock use. Only a tenant topo issued padlock is to be used. It is your responsibility to carry it with you at all times. Working under the protection of another person's padlock is prohibited. All persons working on a machine or entering the machine area must each apply their own padlocks. Isolation process. Let your workmates that might be affected know that you are going to lock out the machine. Check that you are locking out the correct isolator as per the information in the isolation procedures and drawings or the relevant SOP. Push the isolator in. Attach the multi-lock. Attach your padlock to the multi-lock and take your key with you. Make sure the machinery and equipment has come to a complete stop. Test the machine, plant and equipment to ensure it does not start and there is no remaining energies. Complete the task. When you're finished, tell your workmates that might be affected and then remove your padlock. Make sure you take your padlock off when you have finished. Ask your supervisor or job leader if you are unsure of how to isolate and lock out any plant or equipment. Mobile plant. Some examples of mobile plants are cars, trucks, forklifts, loaders and cranes. The most common mobile plant on site are forklifts. Here at Tenen Topo, the rules relating to forklifts are Forklifts have the right of way over other traffic and pedestrians. Never assume that a forklift driver sees you. Always try to establish eye contact and wave if necessary. Wait for the driver to acknowledge you before proceeding. The following are rules relating to forklift operators. Forklifts may only be driven by authorised and certified operators. Hearing protection must be used at all times and safety eyewear must be worn when driving any cabless mobile plant outdoors. No person is permitted to work on or under a raised load. If the mobile plant or vehicle has a seatbelt, then it must be worn. If you are walking around site, always use the designated yellow walkways. Give way to all traffic including forklifts. Driving around site. The following rules apply to keep people safe when vehicles and mobile plant are being driven on site. Seat belts must be worn. Lights must be on at all times. And the maximum speed limit is 25 km per hour. Don't use your cell phone when you are driving on site. You must have a permit to bring your vehicle on site. Site access. Site access is restricted and controlled to ensure the public, visitors and people unfamiliar with the site are protected from our workplace risks. For the safety and well-being of all, the following applies. General access is by authorization only. Visitors and contractors must sign in at reception during office hours or be registered at the main gate after hours. No person is permitted on site by themselves unless they have been inducted. Otherwise, a staff member must escort them at all times. No children under 15 years are permitted on site unless by special arrangement with a senior manager. All visitors, contractors and staff unfamiliar with a work area must make contact with the person in immediate charge of that area. An escort will be provided if required. 
No animals are permitted on site, even in vehicle cabs. Bicycles are not to be ridden on site. Temporary danger areas where hazardous conditions exist shall be cordoned off to prevent unauthorised or accidental access. The following areas are no access areas. The log yard. The two dispatch bays. Restricted access is required for the following areas. The road between the surfacer and the kiln cooling sheds. The road between the kiln's infeed and shed 3. And the road between the surfacer and the mouldings plant. Safety on stairs and platforms. Stairs and platforms can be significant hazards in the workplace if not used carefully. Good housekeeping is essential in maintaining safe walking surfaces. Keep stairs, platforms and access ways free of obstacles so there are no potential trip hazards. Be aware of overhead hazards as some stairways and platforms have low headspace areas. Where practicable, ensure three points of contact when walking on stairs one hand, two feet, or two hands, one foot. Personal protective equipment, PPE, are items of equipment that are used to minimise exposure to workplace risks. Wearing high visibility clothing, safety boots, grade 5 earmuffs, gloves and safety glasses will therefore be required for most work carried out on site. Extra protection and equipment may be required for high risk work such as hot work, working at heights, or handling chemicals. You must wear or use PPE, as directed by your supervisor or job leader. To do the job it's designed to do, PPE must not be modified. Look after your PPE and it will look after you. Ask your supervisor or job leader if you are not sure of the correct PPE for the task. Manual handling. There are a number of jobs on site that require manual handling. To minimize the potential of injury, we encourage you to use correct techniques for manual handling jobs. Don't lift anything that is too heavy for you. Lift with the legs, not the back. Use mechanical lifting aids where possible. Move your feet and whole body, avoid twisting. Keep the load in front and close to your body. Use controlled movements. Your supervisor or trainer will take you through the correct manual handling technique for the task. Hand awareness. Hand injuries are common in any workplace. Always be aware of the potential hand hazards and dangers of your work tasks. Some of these may be pinch points, hot spots, moving machinery, splinters. To minimize the potential for injury, never put your hands or fingers into dangerous parts of machinery. Use the appropriate tool instead. To prevent splinter injuries, never slide boards through your hands. Always follow safe work practices and use the appropriate tools and PPE for the job. Injury and Incident Management Serious accidents can be prevented with good, reliable reporting. All accidents and incidents, no matter how minor, must be reported to your supervisor immediately. This gives the company an opportunity to intervene and prevent a more serious event. Similarly, early reporting of persistent or reoccurring pain or discomfort is encouraged as early intervention can prevent the problem from becoming serious. Each work area has multiple first aid kits and first aiders. Your supervisor or job leader will advise who the first aiders are and the first aid kit location. There are two main first aid rooms located on site. Both these rooms contain defibrillators. A near miss is an unplanned event that did not result in injury, illness or damage, 
but had the potential to do so. These close calls must also be reported to your supervisor so that preventative measures can be put in place to prevent an actual serious injury or incident from occurring. Tenantopor is an accredited employer, which means we manage work-related injuries the same way ACC would. Because of this, injuries requiring medical treatment must be reported to your supervisor or manager prior to attending a doctor or relevant treatment provider. Please make sure that all the paperwork the doctor gives you is handed to your supervisor as soon as possible. Notifiable events A notifiable injury or illness is an injury or illness that requires someone to be admitted to hospital for immediate treatment. A notifiable incident is an unplanned or uncontrolled incident that exposes the health and safety of workers or others to a serious risk. Tenant Topor has some legal obligations to meet if a notifiable event occurs in its workplace. One of these requirements is to preserve the scene where the event occurred. The following process should be followed. In all instances, your immediate supervisor and job leader must be notified. Environmental Risk Management The Topor Processing Site is committed to ensuring that, through the use of good management practices, it meets or exceeds its responsibilities for the protection of the environment. To achieve this, it is important that all environmental incidents are reported to your supervisor or job leader immediately. Chemical spills are to be contained and cleaned up as soon as possible. Trained and approved personnel may be required as the substance could be hazardous and require specialised management. In this situation, notify your supervisor or job leader immediately and, if it is safe to do so, isolate the area. Chemical Spill Management There are multiple spill kits situated in your work area. In the event of a spill, this is how you use them. Move the kit to the spill. Place cover over stormwater inlet. Shovel sawdust onto spill and cover. Once the spill has been soaked up, the sawdust can be disposed of safely. Ensure spill kit is replenished after use. Hazardous substances. Hazardous substances must be managed in accordance with the recommendations of the relevant safety data sheet SDS. The correct disposal methods, as advised in the SDS, must also be followed. All hazardous substances over 60 litres must be contained within a bunded area. Housekeeping Tenantopor demands a high standard of housekeeping. Poor housekeeping is regarded as a leading cause of accidents in the workplace. Tenantopor is also committed to minimising waste across our business. So please keep your work areas clean and free of trip and slip hazards. Recycle where possible, placing recyclable waste and litter into the appropriate receptacles. Health and well-being. We aim to provide a supportive environment for our employees that promotes physical activity, healthy eating and mental health well-being. Fatigue management. The following will prevent fatigue at work. Drink plenty of water and stay well hydrated, particularly in the summer months. Eat healthy, wholesome foods. Make sure you take your regular work breaks. Always let your supervisor know if you feel fatigued. Keeping fit. We encourage regular exercise. Because of this, we have a gym on site that employees can access if they are members. The gym also has a part-time personal trainer, PT. The PT is able to provide good guidance on health, well-being, exercise and fitness. Speak to your supervisor to find out more. We also have a part-time occupational health coordinator. 
who can also offer good advice on how to improve your current health and well-being. Mental health and well-being. If you are concerned about the uncharacteristic behavior of a team member, raise it with your supervisor as soon as possible so help can be provided. The Tenant Topo Employee Assistance Program, EAP, is a comprehensive program that provides confidential counseling services. Contact them on 0800 327 669 if you require any support or talk to your supervisor. Drug and Alcohol Policy Tenantopo supports a drug and alcohol free environment. Our drug and alcohol policy has been developed and implemented to reflect the company's commitment to ensure a safe and healthy workplace for all staff, visitors and contractors. All employees and contractors are expected to report fit for duty and be able to perform assigned work safely and acceptably without any limitations due to the use of or after effects of alcohol, illicit drugs, non-prescription drugs or prescribed medications or any other substance or supplement. Non-prescription drugs, legal and illegal mind-altering substances and alcohol are prohibited on site. Bringing onto site, consuming or being under the influence of intoxicants, non-prescription drugs and illegal substances during work hours is prohibited. You must advise your supervisor if you take any prescribed drugs or medicine. A drug and or alcohol test is required in the following situations. Pre-employment and internal transfer, post-accident or incident, reasonable cause and random testing. The serious misconduct procedure will be followed if a positive drug or alcohol test is returned. If you are suffering from an addiction and need help, please talk to the HR team. Smoke-free policy. Fire is one of the highest risks to our business. Therefore, smoking is only permitted in designated smoking areas and only in break times. Smoking is not permitted in any vehicle on site, including company provided vehicles at any time. If you wish to quit smoking, talk to your supervisor. Emergency management. The safety and well-being of people is paramount during an emergency. If you discover a fire or other emergency that could endanger people or plant, you must activate the nearest alarm. In the event of a fire, activation of the fire alarm automatically alerts the local fire service. Except in the yard office, shed 3 and reception, which have audible alarms only. For these three areas, the fire brigade must be notified. Dial 1 for an external line, then 111. If possible, safely shut down any machinery. Leave by the nearest safe exit. Move quickly, but do not run. Close doors, but do not turn off lights. Report to the designated assembly point for the work area. Do not leave the assembly point or move back into any building until instructed to do so by the area warden. In any other emergency event, notify the appropriate emergency service by dialing 1 for an external line, then 111 if using an internal phone. Give details of the location and any other information the operator needs. Stay on the line. Earthquake. To minimize the risk of injury during an earthquake, the following three phase approach has been developed. Before an earthquake, identify safe places within your work area to avoid injury from falling debris, somewhere within a few steps from where you are. During an earthquake, if you are inside a building, Find a safe place, drop, cover and hold. Stay indoors until the shaking stops and it is safe to exit. 
If you are outside, move away from buildings. Drop, cover, and hold. If you are driving, pull over to a clear location, stop, and stay there until shaking stops. After an earthquake, be aware of possible aftershocks. Check yourself for injuries and get first aid if needed. Help others if you can. The building is to be evacuated if any significant building damage occurs which may seriously threaten the safety of workers or others. General Safety Rules At Ten and Topo, we expect all employees to maintain a high standard of safety. The following types of behaviour are unacceptable. Willful damage of property. Interfering with, defacing or ignoring safety signs or instructions. Falling around where it is unsafe behaviour and has the potential to cause injury or damage. The throwing of items between people. All items must be handed from one person to another. Using a compressed air hose to clean yourself or another person. Crossing safety barriers when machinery is operating. Touching or using any machinery without being trained or authorised. Listening to music with headphones while working. Using a cell phone for personal use during operational production work. All cell phones should be turned off during work hours. An exception may be when a supervisor has given specific approval at a time when an urgent call or message could be expected. Personal use of chainsaws on site. Maintenance high-risk activities. Certain high-risk work will be carried out on site by our own maintenance personnel, contractors and or specialised service providers. Due to the nature of risks relating to these tasks, it is critical that hazards are effectively controlled and safe work methods are applied. Every job for maintenance contractors requires a Job Safety Analysis JSA. You must meet with your job leader before any work is started. The hazards and controls must be discussed and agreed upon before work commences. Hot work. Hot work includes any work that can create heat, sparks or open flame. All hot work requires a permit to be issued prior to the work commencing. Only designated permit issuers can issue a permit. Your supervisor or job leader can advise you of who the permit issuers are and they will take you through the hot work management requirements. The Tenantopo Hot Work Management System has been developed to protect our people and assets. Please ensure it is followed and if you have any queries, talk to your supervisor or job leader. Working at height. If there is a potential for a person to fall from any height, Reasonable and practicable steps must be taken to prevent harm from resulting. Approved fall prevention equipment must be used and anyone working at height must be certified as competent, preferably NZQA accredited. You must see your tenant supervisor or job leader before undertaking any work at a height over 5 metres, as they may be required to notify WorkSafe New Zealand. Fall Prevention Protective Equipment Work at height equipment must have current certification and carry a validity sticker that shows date of expiry. Equipment must be inspected for visible defects before and after each use. An appropriate safety helmet shall be worn when any fall arrest equipment is used. Elevated Work Platforms A safety harness needs to be worn not only in boom lifts, but also when accessing roofs and platforms from a scissor lift. Ladder safety. Ladders should be used primarily as a means of access to carry out light tasks that are of short duration. Don't carry tools in your hands. 
Use a tall belt bag so three points of contact can be maintained when climbing. Safety checks need to be made and extreme care needs to be taken to ensure ladder work is done safely. Check with your supervisor or job leader regarding the use of the working at height permit. Confined spaces. A permit is required prior to any work carried out in a confined space. It must include a risk assessment, atmospheric monitoring, isolation requirements and emergency procedures and needs to be approved by your tenant topo supervisor or job leader. Please see your supervisor or job leader if you have any questions or concerns. Excavation Groundwork Before any earthworks is undertaken, it is important to locate any underground services such as gas lines, sewers, electrical power cables and telecommunication lines. Check with your supervisor or job leader for an excavation certificate and a copy of the relevant area plan. Crane work. Crane work is a high risk activity that requires careful management. Prior to any lift, a safe work approach is required. This will include a lift plan, JSA, trained and certified operators, dogmen and traffic management plan. Tools and electrical power tools. It is important that any tools brought onto site are fit for purpose and safe to use. This means the tools are in good condition and are only used for what they were designed for. Checks should be carried out before they are used. Power tools, including extension leads, need to have been electrically checked and tagged with a current compliance tag issued from a registered electrician. They should be checked each time before use for damage or faults. If they are not fit for use, they need to be removed from site. If you need to bring an electronic device on site, you must obtain approval from your supervisor or job leader as the device must be checked for viruses. Electrical work. The Tenant Topo Electrical Supervisor can be contacted for any electrical work or query you may have. Electrical work must be only carried out by registered electricians competent in the work to be carried out. Working in the log yard. This is a high hazard area, so access is restricted. Talk to your supervisor or job leader regarding specific area hazards and control measures required when working in the log yard. Summary Always lock out moving machinery for any maintenance, cleaning or clearing blockages or jam-ups. Always give way to forklifts and never assume an operator sees you. If there is an evacuation, follow the guys to the relevant assembly point and do what the area warden tells you. Report all injuries and incidents to your supervisor or job leader. If you are unsure of how to do the job safely, stop and ask your supervisor or job leader. When you can remove the risk, do it. When you can't, reduce it. Thank you for taking part in our induction today. We look forward to your commitment to workplace safety whilst working here at Tenen Topor.